In today's era of globalization, organizations have played a significant role in the growth and downfall of any country. An organization is the fundamental framework of any group or groups of individuals who are bound together to share a common goal. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the subject about organizational development. OD is a purposive and planned effort that is managed from top and filtered through the employees with the primary purpose of increasing organizational effectiveness through the use of appropriate and carefully studied forms of strategic interventions. It aims to help organizations survive, be competitive, create comparative advantage, and become a monopoly and be one of a kind. It involves individuals, groups, organizations, communities, governments, and nations. OD uses organizational productivity and strategy interventions to achieve organizational and enhancement optimization. We have different emphasis when it comes to organizational development. We have the organizational effectiveness that focus on individual, team, and intergroup development. We have also productivity effectiveness that focus on quality, total quality management, quality management system, and quality tools. We have also the strategy effectiveness that focus on proactive and differentiated activities like business process re-engineering. Now let's take a look at the three major trends shaping change in organizations. Everybody loves change, right? And when we speak of change, it is inevitable. First is globalization. It is changing markets and environments in which organizations operate as well as the way they function. We have also information technology. It is redefining the traditional business by changing how work is performed, how knowledge is used, and how the cost of doing business is calculated. And lastly, we have the managing innovation. It has responded to the globalization and information technology and has accelerated their impacts on organizations. OD plays a key role in developing organizations to change themselves, and it helps organizations assess themselves and their environments and revitalize and rebuild their strategies, structures, and processes. Let's take a look at, also, the short history of OD. It starts with laboratory training that is begun on 1946. It is an informal and unstructured form of laboratory training in which the participants learn from their own actions and the groups involving dynamics. We have also the survey research and feedback. This approach was developed over a period of 10 years. Francis Lickert developed a technique for the measurement of attitudes, and this is a five-point Lickert scale. And we know that we are using that in research. Third, we have the action research. It is a collaborative and client consultant inquiry. We have also the socio technical and socio clinical approaches. W.R. Bayon and John Whitman and others conducted Northfield experiment at a military hospital where each soldier was required to join a group that performed some tasks like handicraft and map reading including discussions on feelings, interpersonal relationships, and managerial problems. Eric Keyes studied the working scheme of team minors, and each team won the job and sold the call to earn money for the team members' family. 
Now, what does OD approaches to change? How does it approach change? First is problem solving. It is considered a conventional approach. The individuals involved in the change take deliberate consideration of the issue, concern, dilemma, or crisis on hand. We have also experiential learning. It is an innovative approach. And this approach changed by providing situations in which trainees are able to experience through their own interaction some of the conditions they are talking about. We have also contingency approach that assumes knowledge of the functions of an organization and their interrelationship with each other and the environment. Now, in the evolution of OD, we have the change orientation of organization. We have the environmental predictability that refers to consistency of the milieu in an organization. And this ranges from unstable to stable. We have also the change behavior that refers to organization's level of flexibility that varies from high to low. We have also the change outlook of organizations. We have the environmental certainty. It refers to the degree of assurance and confidence in what is occurring in the milieu. We have also the change outlook. It refers to organizations' viewpoint on change and this varies from positive to negative. Now, I want to show you the change process model. As you can see, there are different steps on the process. The first one is to establish a felt need. Before you can uh, make changes to your organization, you must first establish what is really needed. Then second is develop a consultant-client relationship. Prepare an action plan. Of course, what you prepare, you implement. And of course, monitor the results. And it doesn't stop there. You need to work for continuous improvement. Organizations today will not be the same tomorrow. As you can see, on what is happening today, every organization change, especially in the field of education. And that ends the general introduction of organizational development.